Ready, drum roll. Are you ready? Welcome to Hypothetically. I'm Lily Caffrey Levine. I'm Jeff King. Jess and I are going to be breaking down, talking about in short little bits, the different parts of the Mara season that were cut short, kind of talking about some of the hypotheticals that would have gone into the season, kind of come out of these seasons, and kind of where that leaves us now. So, Jess, what happened with men's basketball? Well, what didn't happen with men's basketball was a good season. I'll tell you that right now. So, obviously, we all kind of know that the men lost in the first round to Mac, making this five years in a row where they haven't made it to the quarterfinals. But with Eno coming in and the team chemistry hopefully improving, hypothetically, it would make sense for them to improve on their 7-23 and record. But, but you never know. Knows? You really never know. It's kind of a wild card, I think. I mean, I'd like to say, yeah, it looks good. They should be up and coming, but the, everyone thought that last year. So I don't really you know, know that with Dunn's recruiting class. I don't really know where we go from here. For years, I've been saying on paper, they should be so good. And that's like the worst thing about talking about sports is like <laughs> your roster can be great. But paper like, doesn't matter. Just, it doesn't matter Take when you the just paper, throw it on the court. Throw it out the window. <laughs> Women's basketball, however, did get their season completely chopped off in that they played their first game, they won by a landslide, um, and then we did not, it was 68 to 44 when they played Monmouth um, on March 11th. Um, and then they were set to play Fairfield um, on the 13th. That game never happened. That was the semifinals. I don't know, was this team going to the Sweet 16, Jess? This was their year. I would have came out of mascot retirement for this team in the, the NCAA tournament. Out. Now you can talk about it. Now the secret's out. Now I can talk about it. I've always loved suiting up as a mascot for those girls' games. They never, ever let me down, even when they lost. Yeah, and Je I should mention, Jess keeps saying, or just kept saying throughout all of this, she was like, give me the Grace Vander Whitey and Sabrina Ionescu matchup. I need it. I need the I need matchup. It. I just need it. Like, I'm not saying that either would wipe the floor with one another, but let me let me hit you with some knowledge right here, guys. Grace is a Mac leading passer, sixth in the country with 189 assists, averaging 6.3 assists per game, and she was seventh in Division One. Push came to shove. We are seeing them in, like, an ISO game, one-on-one -on, -one on the court. Like, <laughs> her athleticism, her natural basketball IQ would have made this a real competition that I would be watching so intensely with like five things in popcorn. And like, love that. I mean, yeah, and then with Grace, the other thing that sucks also with the seasons getting cut short is Rebecca Han was six points away from her 2000th point. Three points shy from the Marist record. The more we talk about it, it just feels more and more like a crime that we didn't get to see how it played out. And I think the a other crime. thing, is, like I said, I don't know that they were necessarily making it past the Sweet 16 if they got the Sweet 16, but I would have, whether it ended in the first round or even whether it ended in the MAC championship, I wanted to see it play out. I wanted to see what the ceiling was. So what impact do you see this having on future teams for women's you know. What made me so sad, and I've expressed this to you when we were like coming up with ideas here, is like you really, and I talked about elimination game, is so important to a team to really see who's clutch yeah. and who's not. We can talk a big game about how they had an awesome record, but you know, if they had an off game, it could have blew it for all of them. Like, who knows when they played Fairfield that next day before the season got canceled? They really, hypothetically, they could I mean, have just been knocked that's out. That's like, sports because anybody's going into that Maris Fairfield game, and at, at this point, it's anybody's game. But also, what we are missing out on through all this is who would have been the leader? Who will be the leader? Who would we have seen step up to the plate? Yeah. You know, out of all the underclassmen, you know, they had a good core of seniors. They have a great bench. Yeah, I think their bench is great. And I think the, like you said, the elimination games really give that time to show who's in that position to be stepping up because it's, I, it's a team game. It's a, a, it's a five, there are five people on the court. And we, with this team, we talk a lot about stars. We talk a lot about Alana, Grace, Becca, but it also does kind of come down to the team dynamic because when you look at the stat sheet for a team like this, everybody's contributing and, you know, people have their mm -hmm. big teams, but um, no one's kind of wiping the floor points wise with anybody. No, else. their bench, I think is what made their team so special too. We can talk about our starters, yeah. but it's really their bench that killed it too. And so I think that, well, there's two things. I think one, 
however the season played would have played out would have given them some sort of momentum going into the next season whether it's losing to Ryder or to Fairfield or whoever it would have been and being like okay we came that close now how do we just make that extra step or it would have taken this this run that they could have would have should have had and been like okay we're back this is the new world order how are we going to improve upon it from here um so i think that momentum or the lack of that momentum might hurt them a little bit in coming seasons and then kind of yeah. like that i also think it's we as um reporters and as viewers and as fans didn't get to see kind of who is going to be that next person to step up because i think it could be anybody at this point and that's a good thing because it oh it yeah can't definitely. Be everybody um but it didn't really give that high pressure situation to be like okay who's going to be like the next who's going to be the next leader who's going to be the next big contributor or who's going to be the next leader and then who else is going to be the next big contributor and how are we going to kind of make that cohesive and work it together um so but we're not like, going to see how that works out but i got to give a shout out also to Willow Duffel i do kind of see her becoming the next leader of this group She's a junior right now. This season, she started 22 out of the 25 games. Um, and I think she really did make an impact. She, you can just tell like when she dribbles the ball, like she has that type of maturity on the court, but also kind of like a quiet team leadership ability. I don't know her personally, but she kind of, she walks around with the charisma of being a team leader, I think. And you can really, it is though all up in the air because this team of five seniors that we keep harping on, I think, taught the bench and the underclassmen so many things that like another group of any other five people wouldn't be able to teach them. Mm -hmm. They they have to get the credit the underclassmen for being able to learn from these great mentors that they had. Yeah.